All right, Dr. Sands here. I'm excited to walk through on how to create a work breakdown structure or WBS along with a Gantt chart and the critical path. So for today, this exercise, I'm actually going to use Google Sheets. Um, it's um, this is a low tech um, uh, way to do this. Um, if you uh, you know, had Microsoft Project, then of course that's the best way to go about it. But for this exercise, it's really learning the fundamentals on what is a WBS, what's a Gantt chart, what is a critical path, and how to manually map that out. So if at some point you do use uh, Microsoft Project, then you understand the fundamentals of it. All right, let's get going. So first off, when you're going to uh, create a work breakdown structure, uh, Gantt chart, um, critical path, it's all associated to a project. And so it could be any kind of project. So what I created here was a project scenario and um, just simple. This is a product launch party that we are planning for. And so in this uh, scenario, um, so as I crafted it, in a bustling metropol me metropolis where innovation is the heartbeat of business, our company is poised to introduce this groundbreaking software product designed for the modern needs of small businesses as in, as in as small businesses. So uh, as anticipation build, plans are underway to celebrate the significant achievement with a party benef uh, uh, befitting its importance. And, um, you know, as you can read through there, uh, one of the highlights is going to be the keynote speech from that company CEO. So that's what we're going to plan for is this launch party. And so when we think about planning for event a project you know, it's like you need to think about like the high level what are the you know the highlights what are the key uh, key points that we need to um, uh, basically schedule for so in this case scenario uh, those event highlights are the, the overall venue management uh, catering management uh, presentation and demos uh, marketing and PR, and then of course that that final preparation, right as you uh, about ready to have your party. So this is the foundation of what we're going to create a WBS Gantt and critical path for. All right. So with that, um, part of the WBS work breakdown structure is also what's the cost going to be, right? So with any sort of uh, um, party or project there's going to be people involved um, there's going to be a cost things involved and so you need to have your what you call that you know like a WBS element um, like for example the beverage selection beverage selection fee okay and then uh, campaign design for the uh, for the PR uh, the keynote speech uh, it's going to be professionally written, uh, security checks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, as you can see, um, there is the the element, uh, the unit description, and that unit price because uh, you know you want the unit price and then times how many times you're going to need that unit. So if it's twenty dollars an hour, it's two hours and forty bucks. Okay. So you need to have that into place, um, and then. Just some some key terms for creating you know uh, creating work work a WBS Gantt and critical path. So the critical path um, it almost kind of doesn't make sense when you read it, but uh, critical path the sequence of uh, state stages determining the minimum time for an operation. Okay, then what is it used for? Now this work kind of almost seems backwards, but identifying the longest path through a project which determines the shortest duration to complete it because you got to look out out you know you, when you look out on your um your gantt you'll see where 
if any of these uh, items move, then it moves the whole project out. But at the same time, these are must must do's. And so that's why it works that way. But we'll take a look at it. So WBS, uh, work breakdown structure number for the task. What's it used for? Identifying and organizing task in a hierarchical manner. Task description, a brief description of the specific task or activity. Then what's it used for? Uh, providing clarity on what the task entails. The task owner, the predecessor. The predecessor is, I'm gonna do this thing, but I have to do this thing first before I can do this thing. Uh, resources needed. Well, that's when we looked at the unit cost the resource is going to be, you know, project manager. It's going to be a script writer. Uh, it's the, the people that you need to do to get this thing going. Uh, then resource costs. Like I said earlier, if you can get a script writer and it's $20 an hour, then it's $20. It'd so be times two. And then task status current progress status of the task, i.e. in progress, completed, on track, that kind of thing. And then uh, how many days is each task gonna take? Then the start date and the finish date. Of course, the start and finish date will create the number of days. And then any notes. The notes are super important and you don't wanna forget those. All right, so those elements are what we need to have in place before we can create a work down a work breakdown structure, Gantt, and critical path. All right, so we do. Now, let's take a look at a blank. A blank uh, work breakdown structure, Gantt, and critical path. Um, you know, there could be some minor differences be you know like if you use Microsoft Project doing Excel or something else but these really all the core elements on what you need for a uh, work breakdown structure to create your Gantt and your critical path all right so as you look up here the project name the project manager project manager is typically the one that manages this as well the the date and um, the date typically is the date of your most current revision. So, you know, it's good until you update it and then that's the date. And then of course the version number, uh, however you wanna do version control. Um, so pretty typical, um, this is how it's structured from left to right. You got your work breakdown structure, those will be numbers, your task description, what's gonna need to be done, who's gonna do it, then what needs to be done before that one, your resources needed, your costs, your task status, day, start date, finish date, notes. Basically everything that we covered in the terms. And then as you go to your right over here is where you're gonna have, uh, not that far to the right, but when you go to the, is, to the right of that is where you're going to have um, your Gantt chart, and uh, ultimately where your uh, critical path will be as well. So, you know, the, the, um, for your calendar, you can have different units. Um, this is just, I did this like within a couple months for the example, but if you have them years out, you know, maybe you have um, the month and say maybe by quarter or something like that, or it's, you know, maybe it's just month to month. So it depends on just how your project is structured. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the what I filled in based on the um, product launch case scenario and um, the unit cost, etc. So remember when we looked at the prod, uh, prod the 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 case scenario, there's like the core sections that need to be completed, right? And then those core sections. Um, also, they're the they're kind of the high level over here on the right, and those are going to be in yellow. Now, as we look to um, fill in the detail, you definitely want to start with like the core items you want to uh, complete, and then from there you would fill it in. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I think I've been having to move 
this over just a little bit. All right, let me do this. So I'm going to go ahead and expand all these. Man, I don't know why this is taking so long. Expand that one. Expand on that one. And expand on that one. Okay. So what you can see here is the the yellow is is the high level. It's basically the main thing that you want to accomplish, and then you're going to have uh, the um, the task underneath that to complete it. Now one, two, and three they have a task, and those tasks have tasks, so those are called subtasks. But number four you can see is just you know four point one point two point three point four and it's done so let's go ahead and open up these subtasks like that okay so those are all of the tasks to uh, basically manage the this party all right so number one overall event coordination well under that you have venue management and catering management and those are two other uh, buckets we call that need to be completed to complete the overall number one so as you can see right here so um, before you can do the venue booking the venue management has to be in place and then so on and so forth so you can see these predecessors as before this 1.1.4 can be done 1.1.3 needs to be done and sometimes they're just in order you know as you you know go through this but sometimes depending on how big it is and you can have a whole section up here and you know by the time you get down to here you have to have this whole section way up there completed as well but you can see the flow as it comes down on you know what needs to be done in order to get that task complete as you go on down and then um, the resources needed uh, checklist menu options content media list etc the resource costs associated with that and Basically, as you can see here, um, so for all of section one is $3,500. And then for all of section 1.1 is 2,000. All of section 1.2 is 1,500, which if you do the math, that's the 3,500. So that's typically how you want to go about to do that. So you can get an idea, uh, idea of how much each main section will cost you and then all the all the data that rolls up to that so here's the task status uh, in progress completed not started and those are pretty much the three you typically have for a task status in progress completed and um, not started yet now when you have uh, so the number of days you have the start date and finish date that gets your um, your Gantt chart set up but then you want to have an idea of what how you know how many days it is so when you're looking um, all the way down <clears throat> and ultimately um, we should have um, should have had a, a total of days for the entire project but that's okay um, but ultimately when you, you, you um, count up the yellow here that's how many days it this entire project is going to take so that's uh, 8 9 10 11 that's uh, 30 and about 43 days from start to finish to have your project, okay? So those are all the elements. And this basically, what we're seeing here is a work breakdown structure with the budget, okay? So, um, you know, you can do a work breakdown structure just to, to manage a pro you know, project and if costs are not part of it then that's okay too but you know a lot of times you do need to have the cost with it so you know how much your project's going to be all right so when we take a look at the the gantt chart 
So what I did is I froze this panel so you can see, you know, as you look from left to right from the work breakdown structure over to the Gantt, you can see how basically it flows, right? So for this entire yellow section, number one, you have the yellow up here. And then for this uh, gray section is the gray. And then the blue, and it could be any color. I just picked those colors. The blue is the individual sub components that ultimately roll up to the uh, length of the uh, task. All right, so you know, boom, all the way down here. And you can see the X's. Now, I just use X's on here. Um, you know, you can depict it with an arrow or something else. You know, Microsoft Project has some cool things it does automatically. But you could see what the critical path is. And then from there, you can depict like what are the critical path items to get this done, right? So you can see here critical path item, critical path item, item here. Now, as you can see, when you go left or right, it's it's the end of sections that, you know, push it out, right? So for example, these two blue sections here, this menu selection and beverage selection, this is not a critical path because see, there's time in here that's called slack. Um, you, could, you could ultimately push this menu and beverage selection out a number of days and that's not gonna delay the project. If you push any of these, like with the X's out, then you start to push your project out. So as you can see, as we walk down, here's another critical path here, marketing campaign, and then another critical path item here, uh, cam cam campaign feedback, and then uh, media engagement, uh, and coverage tracking as we Roll on down. You can see the critical path items. Like for example, this one right here, it could shift out a day and it's not going to matter. All right. Actually, we should put an X right here. So that's a critical path item. Because if this one slips, then it puts that section out. Anyways, on the way down. And right to there. So the X's would be your critical path. Any of those would push out. So if any of these get pushed out, then it's going to push out, you know, directly right here on the um, party. So if you have to, so that's how you create a critical path. And then if you had to like, say, document what are the critical path items, then you could go from, you know, looking at this one here then say, okay, well, the keynote speech um, that is important that the keynote speech is complete. Uh, if the keynote speech is, um, you know, a um, component of the event. All right, well, that's a wrap on, you know, what is a work breakdown structure? What's a Gantt chart? And what is the critical path associated with that? So with that, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the section below. Uh, love to hear from you. And please, if you can, uh, please like and subscribe. So when I create new videos, uh, you'll see them. All right, thank you.